Welcome, everyone. We took a couple of uh, days, I would say 48 hours, to digest this most recent loss, the Denver Broncos fall to the Indianapolis Colts. It was a game. We're here to recap it. I'm Bree Maestas here with Zach Sears and Joey Richards. Guys, let's talk some Broncos. How are you feeling? Um, I mean, okay, so we reorganized after um, the game. We decided that our, our mental health after that Broncos game was not good enough to record the day after. So here we are. We're back. We're ready to talk Broncos. I'm feeling better than I did yesterday. Um, yesterday, I hated the Broncos. Today, I just kind of like a little don't like them. Uh, so, so what I'm here, I'm doing better. How, how are you doing, Zach? I'm doing well, you know, definitely worried. We'll see how the uh, Wi-Fi holds up. I, I ran away to the mountains after that Broncos loss, so it might be a little little shaky on that front. But, uh, yeah, excited to uh, be here and finally uh, sift through the mess. Let's go. Yeah, sifting through the mess I think is appropriate. It was not what we wanted to see out of the Denver Broncos, specifically the offense. I think we can all agree there. There was a – a little bit of an issue. Um, when I said it was going to be a low scoring game, I did not necessarily think we would go into overtime tied at nine points. The Denver Broncos sure know how to twist us around, put us into knots. We've watched the reactions this entire time in Broncos country, and we're here to talk about them. Um, and like Joey alluded to, I think we're in much better straits than we were before. Uh, so let's get into it. But I'm generally, throwing- we, we will be here. Post yes. game, like it's not yes. like every loss we're just not going to be around to talk about the game. We will. Sorry, be guys. Here. After the loss, I'm not here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we definitely want to post game win podcast. Yeah. <laughs> no, and I think that we robbed a couple of people from their weekly venting sessions for Broncos therapy, but unfortunately, there was no way to pull it off in a way that anyone would have been happy with the result. So I'm really happy to be back with everyone, and I think you all hit it on the head. We're feeling much better, at least in general, to go ahead and talk some Broncos. Um, I was going to throw it to whoever wants to go first. Let's start with uh, what went wrong. Zach, I'm going to throw it over to you. Oh, shoot. I was I was going to defer to Joey here. I think really the, the most honest answer um, is I don't know. I think it's a big chicken egg problem. I think when you get down to the root of it, they're leaning into like all the worst Russell Wilson tendencies. They're just doing all the, oh man, I'm worried about my Wi-Fi here. <laughs> They're leaning into like all the worst <laughs> Russell Wilson flaws and tendencies. And I think a lot of that is Russell Wilson is the rare player that actively wants to do the things he's bad at, um, largely for ego reasons. And then Nathaniel Hackett is the rare coach that doesn't want to coach his players. He feels like a substitute teacher. It's wild. It's like, oh yeah, you guys want to like watch a movie today? Sweet. Yeah, we'll do that. I, it's, I point a little more of the blame at Hackett personally, but man, Russ is just looking, it's insane mental regression. I have not, he's just, he always had like some problems seeing parts of the field, specifically like the short to intermediate part, but like now he's not seeing any of the field. He's missing, of course, KJ Hamler on the game winning play. He had a KJ Hamler streaking wide open down the field. Uh, he's misplacing his deep balls. It's just like all sorts of weird stuff. He's hesitating. He's like slower than ever. And not just from like a mobility standpoint, I don't think the Millities has declined all that much from last season, but from like a seeing things, uh, standpoint. It's, I really don't think the physical abilities are all that different from last year, but the mental stuff is dramatically worse. And I can't piece together whose fault that is. I think it's a little on everyone. Yeah. I think that's a good answer, Zach. I mean, just to add on to that, some examples, like when I was, a lot of people have been complaining about Jerry Judy. Um, and I think, you know, I understand everyone's frustration, right? Uh, they want, jerry judy to be that first round receiver production um they want and when you draft a receiver that high people want sometimes at least for that wide receiver to make the quarterbacks wrong play a right play right like that that's kind of what they're looking for you saw that with some of the complaints but i do have to say guys like some examples to zach's point there is just like okay so he missed um there was a rub route where jerry judy ran up the sideline starting from the slot uh kind of almost wheeled around for it 
Russ has to throw it sooner. He has to throw it on a line. He allowed the uh, safety to come over. People are complaining about how Judy didn't die for it, but I, I personally don't think that was Judy's fault. Another example, Judy's running a seam right down uh, end zone uh, to the end zone. Russ needs to throw it on a back shoulder instead, leads him. It was Judy dropped it a little bit. You could give or take that. Um, but hey, the throw wouldn't have allowed him to get his feet in anyways. Like there's just a lot of examples there where it's weird. It's like he's either late or the ball's just not good right now. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the reasoning is. It, it seems like a rust issue to me just because these are throws that NFL quarterbacks should be making, like good NFL quarterbacks should be making. I don't care about if it's a new offensive scheme, blah, blah, blah. Like he's seeing it. It's just some of those balls are late or not accurate. So I, I don't know what the issue is there. Um, it's weird. I mean, another example, everyone's going to remember that deep post where the safety came over the top and got a pass breakup uh, to Judy again, right? That was just not a good ball. That wasn't a good ball. Judy ran a good route. Russ threw him down the field like there wasn't a safety there at all. Like he was going to catch it in stride and he was the only man down there. No, that and it just wasn't good. It wasn't good. It's confusing. I'm not sure what's going on there. And yeah, and it's just not good enough. Plain and simple. Yeah, I, I just I agree it's Russ playing bad, but he's playing bad in ways we've never seen before throughout his career, which is my hesitance to just be like, oh yeah, this is a Russ problem. Like even even in his just, uh I, I want to, I'm not challenging that, but I want to say we've never seen Russ make hesitations on the play. Do you really think that that's corresponding to the newness of this offense and the system? And it's team? not newness. I think there's just like, I think that's part of it. I think there's a lot of factors, but a hmm. quarterback regressing this much mentally is honestly like something I've never really seen before. And that's why I look at coaching. Like Joey's saying, like NFL quarterbacks make these throws. They're not this late. And like Russ has uh, always been, you know, a big game hunter, I think, you know, as Tim Jen Jenkins would put it. Uh, he likes to attack downfield. He wants to attack vertically. And as a result, he's held along. But I don't think he's had like these hesitation or just not seeing, like, again, there's been a region of the field he's never been able to see. But that's not what's happening on those KJ Hamler misses. Like that's these are new problems for Russell Wilson that he's never had in his career. And it's not like the sample size is small. It's a decade of high level NFL football. Even last yeah. year, like these last two years where the cracks have started to show these things have not been problems in a, in a similar style of offense uh, coming from the Rams tree instead of a little flirt tree. Like it was a little different for sure, but, and eventually they ended up just turning that into the Russell Wilson offense because of his limitations we're just seeing him not do the simple things mentally to Joey's point. And yes, that's Russell Wilson playing badly, but he's doing stuff we've never seen Russell Wilson do. Like, I just, I can't, I struggle to say, Oh, that's just Russell Wilson because we've seen him in a lot of different situations and it's never been this and never these mistakes at this extreme a degree. And that's why I look a lot, at Hackett, I think they're leaning a lot into the worst Russ tendencies. And I think Hackett isn't coaching Russ whatsoever and telling him, hey, you, you, you need to do this, you need to do this. I think for maybe the first time in Russell Wilson's career, he's not being coached. Yeah, that's interesting to me just because I think that it's human nature for the brain. And I was texting this to you guys this morning as we were kind of running down what our thoughts were now that we were in a better headspace as well, is that the human brain wants to force connections. They're not even forced, but like try to solve the issue at hand. And that's why a lot of Broncos country is kind of failing to say, OK, what is actually going wrong? Because it just doesn't make sense for all the points that, you, that you've already laid out there, Zach, is that we're seeing things from Russell Wilson that are even uh, below the expectation mark of what we thought could possibly go wrong. Where I have concerns is, is that, yes, I understand that the QB maybe possibly could not fall off the cliff this fast. And I don't necessarily think that's a, the case. I think generally there's frustrations that things that should have been very uh, apparently easy are now at fault. And you've got Hackett admitting that he's 
maybe possibly uh, hesitating to make decisions because he doesn't know which exactly is going to fit his roster the best. I think a little bit of that is happening with Russ as well. As he sees his progressions and as he's missing wide open players, he's unable to make those decisions. And I think that that has to fall somewhere in between. When you put out that poll today about who's more to blame, Russell Wilson or the coach, you know, at different points in times, it seems like to be almost a shared concern. Russ, this last game, 100% on him. I can't find the strength to blame elsewhere. But is it Hackett holding him back or is it Hackett not holding him back enough? It's an in interesting question. Go ahead, uh, Joey. Yeah, you know, I understand the coaching thing, but I do think it's odd that some of these plays even really have to be coached like that. Like Russ, when the safety's over the top, don't throw it over the top. <laughs> like, that's just like a weird thing to even but have that to It hasn't been a problem his whole career. You know what I mean? It's no, not I like, totally oh, get what you're crazy. saying, Zach. I totally get what you're saying. But no matter what, it's weird that that even has to be said. Like, yes. like why does Russ have to be told to throw? But that's fine. But it still makes it weird. You could say, okay, the coaches aren't enforcing this. But it's weird as hell that it even has to be enforced, some of this stuff. Like, That's where some I of these are common knowledge. I'm an NFL quarterback. I'm a vet. I've been in the league forever. People say I'm a future Hall of Famer. Why am I throwing the ball over the top when it needs to be more flat and on a rope? Like, it's just like weird things that I just can't wrap my brain around right now. I don't know what the issue is, but I do know that. I, I, I'm pretty confident that there's more than one hand, and I, I don't know who to blame more. I don't know who to blame more. I don't because it's weird. I can't rationalize it in my brain. I can't come up with something where it's like, oh, that makes sense. It, none of it makes sense. None of it makes sense to me. It's just weird. Um, so I, That's it. I, I it's, don't know. I've never seen mental regression like this from a quarterback. To your point, it's like very simple things. And it's not like Russell Wilson's a dumb NFL quarterback. He's proven it over a decade of NFL football. Like, and he's doing things like making simple mistakes. Again, to Joey's point, that he just has not made earlier in his career. I, and I can't piece together. That's why in part I'm looking at Hackett because I'm thinking, but to your point, like those things shouldn't have to be enforced. I wonder if some of it's Russ pressing so hard, like all of the uh, uh, lack of being genuine and stuff is, you know, the result of, Russell Wilson trying to be the, you know, everything for everybody. And he just comes off, you know, coming across really corny and not genuine. I think the root of that is he just so desperately wants to be liked. Maybe he's in a new situation and like, he's just pressing so hard. He wants to be Peyton Manning. I just, to your point, I can't rationalize it because I've, and it doesn't make sense. Like if you one thing, if he suffered like, if instead of a finger injury, it was like a traumatic brain injury, like what we're seeing Tua go through now, where it was like, I don't know, maybe there's something there with processing, but that's not there. I do wonder, because I do think week five was noticeably so much worse than the other weeks, if some of it's on the shoulder, um, maybe he didn't feel he could drive that ball. Maybe he felt like he had to loft it there, for example. Um, that's, and then it would also possible. maybe explain maybe it would also explain why a lot of the throws were a hair behind. Um, I don't think it should be that bad always, but yeah, it's, it's baffling. I, I don't have good explanations. Yeah. And we I didn't think... even get into the red zone play that would have won the game, right? Like, <laughs> like there's like so many examples here in that game. That was just like, wow, what's going on? Russ was two of 15 on passes over 10 yards down the field. And that's Let's just the thing. rationalize that's, that real quick. That's insane. That's, that's always good. been Wilson's strength. <laughs> that's been Wilson's strength his whole career to go into the last play of the game. Okay, he's always struggled with the stuff in front of his offensive line because he can't see around it. He misses the wide open receiver on the perimeter to throw it over the offensive line. That's not the story of Russell Wilson's first decade in the NFL. So I don't know if it's how the offense is being coached. I don't know if it's him pressing too hard. It's probably an amalgamation of a lot of things, but again, it's not like Matt Ryan's playing even worse right now for the Colts. And like he's washed and it looks different. It's just like, Ooh, he does not have it anymore. Wilson. There's definitely been an athletic decline, but it's all the mental stuff. And I've just, I've really, I don't think I've ever seen that from a quarterback before where it's like, he's demonstrated all these things before. 
I, like Pete Carroll and whatnot, they were well, covering That's why it feels like a plaza. distraction. Mm. That's why it feels like a distraction. It feels like not even mental regression because I'm not – like you've already said, you've said Russell Wilson is not a dumb quarterback, and it's not something that we've seen him necessarily struggle with for a long time. It feels like a distraction. It feels like a lot of things are playing in and creating this perfect storm of what the fuckness what with the Denver Broncos offense. I don't think it's one thing necessarily. Right. I think it's all kind of a, a culmination, as you said, of like – all the things kind of uh, football is a lot about luck. It's a lot about like how the ball yep. bounces and when it does. So you're talking about a ton of variables coming together with a quarterback who maybe feels a little bit out of sorts because the human element is huge in football. So oh. I'm thinking like, I think it's a lot of all of it. So it's not yep. necessarily that I want to point it's, the finger, but there's something wrong. Totally. Totally. It's I totally perfect agree. Storm thing. It's I the totally perfect agree. storm thing. Uh, it is. It could be the, multiple things, right? Like KJ Hamler alluded to this in his presser. He said well, that Russell's be. dealing with too something. Big. What was that? It has to be multiple things. Like I don't think anyone's saying it's either this or it's this or it's this. It, it's a perfect storm of problems, and that's I think why, honestly, that looks so pessimistic right now. I yeah. don't have a lot of faith in Russ being super adaptable or Nathaniel Hackett coaching this whole situation up. And then even I think if you did have confidence in that they're so hamstrung by injuries now like i think the best russell wilson offense is has the foundation of a strong run game is does that exist anymore without bulls and javante williams we need to talk about that first and foremost because I, really i should have led the show off with that i we need to cover the injuries because i think more than anything that's what took a lot of us out there on friday morning is getting the results of everything that has gone wrong the denver broncos have lost a lot of their core players here in the first five weeks and then thursday was just the the terrible bitter cherries on top as Garrett Bowles goes down with a broken leg. And then you um, receive word that Ronald Darby somehow uh, tore his ACL. Uh, I think that's now four on the season. And I think Broncos country just literally could not take that news on Friday. Um, can you guys just talk to me about the impact that that has? I don't think enough people understand that um, although Bulls may have had a couple of missteps here this season that have seemed to really stick out like a sore thumb, how much it's going to hurt losing him on that offensive line. And then Ronald Darby was playing so well. We've been, you know, singing his praises and now he's out for the defense. The Broncos yeah. are more than injury ridden at this point. It The wheels seem to be falling off. So talk to me a little bit. Yeah, I think Bulls was – so we're going to really feel that because we've had a lot of offensive line issues this year. Um, Bulls was the only offensive lineman that had played last week on that starting O line um, that was out there that was average. Everyone else on that offensive line is below average, so you're really going to start to feel that. Um, I'm excited to see what Calvin Anderson has at left tackle. I think that he's a better left tackle than he is right tackle at least from what I've seen in the past. So that'll be interesting to see. Um, and he's going to get a good look, man. Uh, he's on a contract year, so it, it'll be interesting. As far as the Darby one, that one really, really sucks. Uh, I've said on here multiple times that it's easy to pick on the bad corner out there. And guess what, guys? When Darby went out at the end of the game, we saw it. We saw exactly, exactly, exactly that. You can pick on a bad corner or the least, like the, the one that's not as good as the others, right? That's what we saw. They picked on Mathis. Um, unfortunately, he's a rookie. I didn't really expect him to blow my socks off, right? But he did. He got picked on. They led a uh, scoring drive in overtime picking on Mathis. They led the drive to tie the game up um, on Mathis. So... Yeah, that, that's just my take on those. There are two big losses, and they're hard to bounce back from. It feels like the Broncos, everyone talks about the Chargers being so snake-bitten, but it really does feel like the Broncos are pretty snake-bitten with these injuries for a while now. Yeah, it, it's horrific luck. Like, it's not – an injury suck any way you slice it, um, but it's not just like it's happening to <laughs> – uh, they have three ACL tears, I think, or four. I, I was trying to run through and figure out who the fourth one was, but I, I'm forgetting someone, I think. But the three ACL tears, I can't remember. Ronald Darby, wide receiver, or cornerback two, super important to the offense. Tim Patrick, most reliable offensive weapon. Um, would be great to have that in the offense right now. That trio with him, Sutton, and Judy uh, would, I think, help out this passing game a lot. Uh, 
and then Javante Williams, which I think should be like the foundation of this offense. Um, and then Garrett Bowles is in an ACL. Uh, his broken leg, that's your starting left tackle. And to Joey's point, like the only <laughs> quality piece of the offensive line, it feels. Um, this It's horrific. Um, it's not just like all very serious injuries that are season ending and frankly lead to some concern about what did these guys even look like next year? Um, but it's a, a lot of key positions where like, even if I think you had faith in Wilson and Hackett to figure things out, the Broncos outlook is bad. Like it's just, they're a really beat up team and this is the easy part of their schedule and they've put themselves in a hole during it. Like, even if this team gets clicking, it's, it's, it outlooks bad. Spooky. Yeah. It's it is it is a little bit because you're asking for depth where there doesn't seem to be any. Um, the other one would have been Demari Crockett during uh, training camp with his ACL. So in the in, obviously in the running back room. So you're you're losing the uh, ability there after losing Javante Williams, which I think Melvin Gordon had a game on Sunday. I just want to point that out as we're kind of trending good and a bad. I think that there was some hopefulness there that you were hoping to see. I know uh, a little bit of a, a fumble there, getting it recovered. Um, and that was just based on contact in my eyes, but I don't want to harp on that too much. I just, I want to re-express that, yeah, early in the season, these injuries, you are getting Justin Simmons back here soon. You've got Billy Turner um, floating out there on the horizon, just out of reach of Broncos country, who's really hoping to see his impact there on the field. And then you end up losing, like I already said, core people. You got Josie Jewell, who um, obviously just a, a little banged up. And then, uh, Baron Browning with a little bit of a wrist thing. Um, it's wearing and tearing at a high rate. I like, it's almost as if you went ahead and bought that Toyota and it turned out to be a lemon. Like there's, there's concern here that uh, as that starts to mount up, you're not looking, you're just making to look at it to the end of the season. I think a lot of Broncos country on Friday felt like, all right, this is the end. I'm not here to say necessarily that I feel that way, but I was down in sorts as that of that as well. I was looking to point fingers, come up with justification, and then I was just damn exhausted with all of the injuries because I feel for those people as human beings first and second of all, there's a lot of season left. What do you do from there? I don't know. Yeah, that's a great point. I, I, I don't know where the Broncos go from here. Yeah. Good. That's good. It's, um, <laughs> I have no idea. It, it's, I mean, they, this is why it was such a devastating loss, right? Like it wasn't just the loss. It felt like the Broncos season is just in turmoil after that one. That, that, that's, that, that, that's the overarching problem with that game. Broncos fans were not pissed off because the Broncos lost. They were pissed off because it felt like the season was over. <laughs> that, that's pretty much the reason why everyone, that, that game was just so gut-wrenching um i don't know i think Broncos fans, what we have to look for at this point is less playoffs less trying to get the winning season and more being like hey we're stuck with this quarterback for a long time let's get this guy rolling <laughs> that's that's pretty much what i want to see if the broncos could lose uh 45 to 40, right? And i'm gonna be a lot <laughs> happier with than what happened last week because we just traded two first two seconds three players and paid him 245 million dollars uh, on freaking prime time you yeah. wanted more prime time games broncos country here you I'm go good stop with the prime time i need we people to stop Monday seeing night. our games i need this they need to stop seeing them all together <laughs> I, I hope Comcast cast cancels the Broncos. Oh goodness, no, we've gone there already. All right, shouts out to <laughs> the other deserve it. Get, get over yourselves, everyone over there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, to Joey's point, it is totally devastating. Um, like I don't know, it, it's horrific. You're losing your difference making running back on off. I don't know how you fix it. It's all on Russ in the passing game now. I just and the offensive line's even worse. Um, I do think, yeah, it's all about seeing those positive nuggets. I do think uh, how tied the Broncos are to Russell Wilson has been really overstated, um, especially in the modern age of football, um, where we're seeing GMs be a lot more aggressive and a lot more willing to swallow dead cap and suffer through maybe a lean year. Um, yeah, it, it, if, if this goes bad, like if this goes the way it's trending, 
right? Like there's not, I'm fairly optimistic about the long-term outlook because either things turn around or they stay shit and next year's gonna be bad and you'll end up with a high draft pick and you'll move off Russ next year. And like, that's the reality of it. Um, Guys. If it stays so horrific. And that sucks because it's like a year and a half of bad football. But I don't think it's like this, oh my God, this is what it might be for the next five years. That's not the case. Um, the Broncos no. will get out of it if it's that. There might be, like it depends. If you really hate purgatory, I'd maybe be concerned that Russ improves to just being mid and you get a new coach in here and it's just mid and everything's like, eh, fine. And the Broncos are nine and eight maybe 10 and seven in an immediate playoff exit. And that's just like not what you paid for or traded for. Um, but I, I just, it's not going to be five years of misery. If it's this gross, it'll end after next year. I'm concerned about the players. Okay. I'm concerned about this roster who lost a lot of faith in the last coaching staff. How do you feel that they are trending right now? We're hearing obviously reports out of the locker room that the players haven't got given up. And obviously you're going to hear that because guys want the job. They want to be on the team. And they also have a lot of passion here early in the season. I'm not saying or alluding to the fact that I think that the Broncos roster or that the staff has lost the, the team at all, or that the Russ has lost the team at all. But we had kind of alluded to this at the start of let's talk Broncos this season that uh, it was going to get old and it was going to get old quick. It was going to fall steeply off the cliff. I don't know if we're necessarily there, but I think that you may start to see players get a little bit frustrated. Obviously, uh, we saw KJ Hamler do just that on Sunday. Um, that tells me that there's still passion and intensity there because I'm, I'm glad he did it. I'm glad that he was able to feel like he could express that. Um, it would more worry me uh, if they were apathetic and didn't care and head down and nobody was oh. talking and and they were quiet. Silence would say a whole lot more here. So I don't necessarily think that the roster is any way, shape, or form off or done for. But you are probably going to see a couple of people because it's not always a united front taking some more individualistic approaches here for the rest of the season if playoffs are no longer in the picture. That's my biggest concern here is you're going to start to see a little bit of branching off here from the united front of the Denver Broncos team. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, at the end of the day, guys, like those quotes always crack me up because I don't know what people expect the players to say. Um, there's, there's only one right answer. There's literally only one right answer. Yes, but I think I've heard this same sentiment from people who are having behind the scenes conversations with players. Like to your point, the PR stuff's going to be the PR stuff. But like, yeah, you people have sources and can talk to them. And players uh, don't necessarily have a problem burying coaches, as we saw this exact time last season. I just, the, people can talk shit to their private sources about the coaching staff and be fine. Um, that's not coming it's out hard right for me now. To believe, though. It is. It's hard for me to believe that I, think I can sit there and watch on my that. TV just like mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake. All of Broncos country is on Hackett's ass right now. So your exposure <laughs> is also different. Be completely fine with them. Your exposure is different. I don't think it's completely fine. Like to Bree's point, you saw KJ Hamler. You're not seeing apathy. I think we're starting to see the cracks showing. I don't think it's like all hunky dory in Bronco land. Um, I don't think it's it's a binary. I think Say Bronco the Land again, and I'm kicking you from the show. <laughs> no, no, no. We're, Call it we're, Bronco we're, Land. It's Bronco yeah. Land on this podcast. <laughs> no, it's, it's Bronco not. Land. Um, that was a, that was a goat reference. Um, but uh, <laughs> everything. I don't Cliz. think. Yo, uh, <laughs> but uh, shout out one shout out one time um, to Cliz. Big man upstairs. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I don't know. It's bad. I, <laughs> I, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. Oh, yeah, I just, th it's trending towards the direction of absolute nightmare. No debating that. I think these players are totally getting frustrated and everything. I do think as of now, things are still okay. I wouldn't be surprised if the defense is starting to get pissed off at the offense. Um, I think that's kind of standard place in the NFL where it's like, you all need to start doing your part. There's always kind of an inherent division between the offense and defense. Um, but I don't think it's like nuclear disaster now. Uh, if they get if they get embarrassed by the Chargers on prime time again, and I count an 11-10 win as an embarrassment. If it's like another meme <laughs> fest and everyone's laughing at him again, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the nail in the coffin. But I, I do think it isn't there yet.
Yeah, I mean, it could be Legion of Boom too. I don't know. I'm frust I, I'm frustrated. I'm scared. That is my legitimate worst fear. Um, I feel like we've been in incredibly negative. Um, I don't want to continue to force that issue. But uh, can we do a little bit of a lightning round of like, all right, I saw this was good. This was good. Um, Joey, do you want to go first? Yeah, for sure. Shout out to Evro again. Guy's awesome. <laughs> I like I like some of um, his blitzes and stuff. I, I love seeing those packages on third down that he brings out there third and long where it's like, oh my God, is that Bradley Chubb, Nick Benito, and Baron Browning? That stuff is fun to see. Uh, also another one, Caden Stearns. I think he should start. Caden Stearns is awesome. That first pass that he intercepted completely baited Matt Ryan. Um, second one was just Matt Ryan being terrible. But can shout out Caden Stearns. <laughs> guy, is, guy is pretty good, man. I'm excited to see more of him out there. I am a huge Caden Stearns fan. Been saying all LTB long he should be starting. I really think like, and Kajak's good. He has not been a problem on this defense, but Caden Stearns, I think, is a difference maker. And I don't think at this point in his career, Kim Jackson's a difference maker. I think he can still be a really valuable piece on this defense. But I think in base packages, and part of it's Caden Stearns is probably the better dimebacker, but in base packages, I really would like to see Stearns and Simmons be the starting safety tandem. Um, but yeah, he's been absolutely remarkable. Evro was terrific. Want a second that I hated what he did at the end of the first half. I thought that was um, some uh, uncharacteristic conservatism because to Joey's point, he's like throwing three pass rushers out there on third down. He's being super exotic, really aggressive. One of the highest blitz rates in the league. And then on that play where it's such a low scoring game and the offense is clearly struggling, it felt like he gave the Colts three free points. And I was, that drove me crazy a little bit. You hit on that and now I want to hit Baron Browning. Go Joey. Oh, okay, good. I'll, I'll lead you into it, Zach. I'll, I'll throw you the oop into the Baron Browning. Oh, I thought you wanted Evero stuff, but, but Browning, my God, he's a, he's a God. Can I throw you the oop real quick? All right. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. This isn't even an oop. This is giving myself um, prop <laughs> here on the podcast. No, for, for, yeah, I this like is, how you framed it as an oop, and it's a victory lap. It's a victory <laughs> lap. Um, By the way, he was credited with one and a half, not two. But. I mean, but at the end of the day, I did predict one and a half. I hit it right on the head. I mean, we didn't go over. We didn't go under. If you guys go, <laughs> go watch this last, <laughs> this last podcast, I put – Baron Browning at one and a half sacks, and he did exactly that. I don't know what else. Do any <laughs> guys want to add on to that? <laughs> yeah. He, he looked, and it's lofty, but it's true. He looked like Von Miller out there, just from like a stylistic body type standpoint. Like the way he was moving around, I think you could have thrown 58 on him, and he would have <laughs> looked at, uh, uh, even more like Von Miller. It was I was so blown away by what he did. It looked so natural. Um I want to see more of it before I say I was wrong that we wouldn't get two Micah Parsonses in a single draft, but Jesus, like it wasn't just good. It was the best game PFF has ever recorded from a pass rusher. He pressured the quarterback on 60% of dropbacks. If a team pressures, if a whole football team, a whole 11 man football team, pressures the quarterback on 60% of his dropbacks. It's insane. Baron Browning did that all, all on his own. That's stupid. He had a third of the QB hits in this game, in a game where it felt like every dropback, Russ and or Matt Ryan, were getting up off the turf. That's not a third of the quarterback hits for the Broncos. He had half the quarterback hits for the Broncos, a third of the ones in the whole game. It's it's stupid. I like I love it so much. It's... Uh, it's amazing. Oh, and then the pass rush win rate of 50%, also the highest in PFF's history, which goes back to 2006. Think of all the great pass rushers that have played their entire careers between 2006 and 2022. Baron Browning in his first start had a single game better than all those guys. Uh, probably not replicable, replicable on a week to week basis, but that's fucking insanity. And I love it. Yeah. Um, Am I allowed to send a shot at somebody on Twitter right now? <laughs> <laughs> I say, I say it's free game. I don't know the context I don't know when you of this. So I can point back to this before. for innocence. Yeah, I yeah. did check the private chat. I said, "Can I send a shot at somebody at Twitter?" Then leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do it. It's mic drop. Joey's mic drop of the day. Okay, I'm not gonna throw an ad out there, but there was this guy, draft analyst dude, that was like 
every once in a while he just has to he has to remind everybody on Twitter that he was right about these two linebackers, these three linebackers being better than Baron Browning. And every single time I see it, it gets me going because I'm like, yo, now now I'm just seeing him be good at two positions, my man. Like now now he's an edge. He was good at linebacker. Like, what does he gotta do? <laughs> I don't I don't understand it. Um anyways, guys. Yeah, that, that's all. Uh, should I should I throw the at? No, I'm not gonna throw that. I'm good. Okay. Can I guess it? Can I guess it? Yeah. No. I'll guess the first name. Is it Justin? No. Oh, never mind. His worst okay. enemy. Uh, so <laughs> Jesus. Now I'm saying, that's a hit. Uh, Twenty questions. Does he wear glasses? Does he have brown hair? Is it a? Yeah. Let's key? play guess who. That no, we're not game. playing. No, we're not playing. Guess who? No, uh, really that keeps it red. <laughs> oh my goodness, we're going down the hill. I just want to touch on the Broncos defense real quickly. I think we've hit a, a lot of uh, spectacular points here. Alex Singleton uh, showing out uh, in the first half of the game. I believe nine tackles. Thanks, Cody Rourke, for that information over there. My high sports contributor. Broncos de- defense was responsible for two interceptions, six sacks on Matt Ryan. He leads uh, QB leaders this season. Fumbles eleven, interceptions seven, and sacks taken uh 21 so yeah i know the colts offensive line is anything to um shout from the rooftops about but i will take any chance to just uh talk about how dominant this denver defense has been and i just wanted to end the pod on that note because i think it is well worth uh shouting from the rooftops uh patrick sertan again should be on every wide receiver one in this entire league going forward he's going to get tired but i think he can handle it uh anybody want to touch on that before we head on out of here Patrick Chetan's a yeah. beast. I don't even have anything to say about the guy. He's just really good. <laughs> I think it was cool. Like, even in the bad years uh, for the Broncos, it was like, you've got Von Miller. And I think that does, like, having that transformative star that you can say, hey, maybe we have the very best player in the league at a given position, and it's a primo position. Um, and, yeah, it's debatable. It always is. Uh, but – the fact that you can just kind of stake your claim there as a fan and, and at least have that to root for, I actually really do think is valuable. Um, I think there's also cool parallels with like the Champ Bailey thing. Like it, it scratches as a nostalgia itch uh, as well as being just like its own uh, unique joy. And I don't know. Uh, we all engage with football because we want to be entertained. And I think we can all agree that's not happening with the Broncos right now. I think we have to search for the glimmers of entertainment and, Man, Patrick Sertan's one of them. I, I wish we could always have the prime all 22 camera angles so I could just watch Patrick Sertan all game instead of the Broncos. Let's go. I uh, was just going to make a little chide there since that's what we're doing today, feeling a little petty here in Broncos country at Let's Talk Broncos. Maybe we should have uh, drafted Justin Fields. And on that note, uh, I'm being completely sarcastic. Uh, <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter, BreeMaces303. Guys, anything, party words for uh, Broncos country? Should, okay, Shout my out. question to Broncos country is, should I drop that picture of Justin Fields in a Broncos jersey just to see the reaction? Do it. Yes. <laughs> the reaction. Right now. With you the are going to get stuff. so much hate. You are oh. going to get so much hate. That you it would be so it. good, though. It would be I a troll. Hey, you. LTB <laughs> listeners will know it's a bit. Most people won't. I want to shout out Caden Stearns. Get on the get on the pod. Caden Stearns, friend of the pod. Get on the pod. Uh, loving watching. I know you're Texas. watching Caden. Slam, slam Oklahoma. And uh, also, Caden Stearns was hilarious on Twitter today. Him and PJ Locke, uh, another friend of the show, a guest on the show, uh, dunking all over Oklahoma. I love to see it. That's before, for Seager's before I head out, can I say a funny PJ Locke story real quick? Yeah. One time, he just DM'd me his face on a Drake album with no context. <laughs> the, the clouds one. Yeah. <laughs> take it was care. Like a take it was, on that. Yeah. I. <laughs> it took me like an hour to respond. I was like, "What do I say?" <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's all. Everyone, go follow me at Jr. Draft. <laughs> Find my writing at My High Sports. That's it. Uh, love those guys for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, shout out PJ. I, I, yeah, yeah, PJ is awesome. Um, all right, guys, uh, Mile High Sports, that's where you can find us every, uh, usually every weekday, uh, not Thursdays. We're going to get out of here, and uh, let's go Broncos. <laughs>